Amen. I welcome everyone here today in Jesus' name. We're talking on anointing. Anointing for end for the end time harvest. Thank you, can choir. Come on, see what the Lord can do. But number one. Come and see what the Lord has done. Before we go out, proclaim what the Lord can do. He must have done something in our personal lives. Right? Come and see what the Lord has done. For me, we have a testimony. And we have the challenge that this is what I was. And this is what I am now. A change had happened. Then, as I was said, come and see what the Lord has done for me. Come and see what the Lord is doing at the present moment. Today, the Lord will do something. Yeah. And then, come and see what the Lord will do. Because it's still the same in the past, in the present, and in the future, Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. And what he did before for other people, he will do for you. Yeah. You know, some people say, I cannot be like, I cannot be like. Why not? If it's by grace that he does it, and he's done it for him, it's by the same grace he will do it for you. Somebody say, I cannot be like Pastor Deep Alive. <laughs> Why not? It's like me saying, you know, I read John Wesley. And when I read and read and read, I didn't say, I cannot be like John Wesley. Of course I can be. If grace made him what he was, that same grace will make you what you ought to be in Jesus' name. <laughs> Elisha. Looking at Elijah, I cannot be like Elijah. Why not? Why not? That's why he followed him. That's why you are here. That what the Lord did for Elijah, he will do for Elisha. Yeah. Any Elisha in the house there? God has blessed you. It's like um, Peter looking at Christ. He is Christ. I cannot be like Christ. Why not? He that believeth on me, the works I do, he shall do. And greater works than this shall he do, because I go to the Father. Is Jesus with the Father now? Yeah. Then Peter can be like him. Then you can be like him. Yeah. I will be, I will be. like him. Father, we thank you at this hour. I didn't come here, you didn't send me here to entertain people, but to help people eliminate whatever is making them not manifesting your own anointing. Lord, I pray everything that quenches fire. Everything that robs us of anointing. Everything that makes us to go the wrong way and we don't have the anointing we ought to have. The anointing in Matthew. The anointing in Mark. The anointing in Luke. The anointing in John. The anointing in the Acts of the Apostles. Anything that makes us to lose that anointing Cancel from every life in Jesus' name. The anointing that makes the weak strong. The anointing that makes the coward courageous. The anointing that takes the word of God and goes on every village, every town, every city, every community. And the end time harvest is brought from the field and brought into the fold. Lord, I pray, give everyone in Jesus' name. Whether it's coldness, whether it's weakness, Lord, I pray, fire from heaven. Somebody help me shout, fire from heaven. 
the fire from heaven will drop in every heart in Jesus' name. Quicken our spirit. Quicken our soul. Quicken our body. We will rise and run. We will run and we will harvest that world, the world for the kingdom of God at our own time. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. And um, you know, I thank the Lord. You can see that I thank the Lord for can, and I thank um, the Lord for bringing uh, that verse. Uh, that's John chapter seventeen, uh, verse twenty-one. I thank the Lord for bringing that to the lamb limelight. That day, all may be one. As I, far as I, and the Father are one. But you understand, the weak and the strong becoming one doesn't mean the weak will remain weak, the strong remain strong, that's but one. No, it's to pull up the weak to the same level as the strong, and we are one. The righteous and the unrighteous. Let's be one, yes. But how does that happen? Like the Father and the Son. The Father is holy. The Son is holy. The Father is mighty. The Son is mighty. Let's be one as the Father and the Son are one. Not that somebody remains righteous. The other one is unrighteous, we are one. No. One is holy, the other one is unholy, we are one. No. One is dedicated to God, on fire for the Lord. The other one is in the cold room, we are one. No, we bring that one in the cold room, set him on fire, we are one. Look at Elijah. Elijah had the power and the spirit of God. And God had told Elijah, you will anoint anointing. You will anoint Elijah. And the anointing that comes upon Elisha will make him to do similar work. Like Elijah did, it is that similarity that we call oneness. And so we can say, Elijah... And Elisha became one. We shall be one. Amen. The weak will not pull down the strong, so we can be one. But the strong will lift up the weak, and then we are one. And actually, Elisha said, give me, tell me, a double portion. Because if the challenge you face is greater than the challenge that Elijah faced, you need double power, double anointing, double outpouring of the Holy Ghost so that anywhere you are, you will be as victorious, as successful as Elijah was. I need a good amen. Amen. You know, when you think of, like me now, for example, yes, I preach here and there, but I'm in the city. And there are some things we confront in the city. But if you are in the locality, if you are in the village, where you confront this power, this power, this power, where they do some, you know, sacrifices at your doorstep, where this one is, you know, casting this and casting that, you need an anointing more than I need. I need. You need the double portion. Because, you know, we're coming from the city and, you know, we can stand all those other things, that one, that one. But now, you in the locality, and this one comes up and that one comes up, may new anointing, fiery anointing, 
double anointing come upon your life in Jesus name I want you to think about it at this time now I just passed the line of 83 years of age and if the 83 year old man is standing like I'm standing now is walking like I'm walking now and he's running 40 years of age where are you 43 years of age where are you 60 where are you you must get the double and you know, I, I, I'm tired I'm tired of the people say I can't be like Pastor Kumuyi You will run faster. You will go higher. That's what we need today. I'm going to put an injection in your life. We're not going to you know, entertain. Pastor, I am weak. Be gentle with me. Uh, uh, you know, I'm preparing people for the end time harvest. And you are one. You are one. You are one. That same anointing that has sent me here. Why don't you? Why, is somebody sitting down there? This anointing that has taken me here and there and there. Give me your hand. I said, Give me your hand. We're going together. I said we're going together. Double anointing, let it fall upon everyone in Jesus' name. God bless you. You can see now I'm talking today on readiness for the great harvest at the end. At the end, all the signs we see around us, they show us that we are at the time of the end. And we need to get ready. Ready that the Lord will impart our lives. And ready that we go to every part of the world. And we impart the world in Jesus name. Amen. Delta for Christ. Amen. South, South for Christ. Amen. Nigeria for Christ. Amen. Africa for Christ. Amen. And beyond Africa, the globe for Christ. Amen. Through you. Amen. Through you. Amen. Readiness for the great harvest at the end. We're looking at three things here. Number one, we're looking at readiness of his present day harvest. The harvest is ready. The present day harvest they're waiting for you they're waiting for me they're waiting for us everywhere readiness for his present day harvest number two rejection of perverted hypocrites uh, you see uh, there are people they don't understand the harvest they, they, they think uh, you know harvest will just go there to whitewash the dirty people and they don't really excavate and take away everything that will not feed into the harvest on high. Eh, the whitewash days will cover up this, cover up this, and they're hypocrites. They talk of anointing, but they don't have the real anointing. And because, you know, they're in the church, and they say, want, they want crowd. We're not looking for crowd. We're looking for the people will harvest from the world and will bring them into the kingdom. I hear of people that, you know, they want anointing, and it, it, the one in Christ is not enough for them. And the one in the kingdom is not enough for them. The one that God gave the apostles of old, not enough for them. The ones in the acts of the apostles, not enough for them. And they go to, you know, the dark, behind the curtain, and then they do this, and they console the dead. And they're looking for anointing, and then they come out. 
you cannot do the work of the Lord with the power of Satan. You cannot have the Holy Ghost upon your life when you carry the unholy gospel that doesn't touch any life. That doesn't mean anything to Satan. You cannot be married to Satan in the corner at the back. And then you come out anointing, anointing hypocrisy. That hypocrisy, the Lord wipe away from the church in Jesus' name. <laughs> number three, we're looking at number three in the rapture for the precious harvest. What if the rapture takes place and all the people you minister to, the people, you know, they dance with you, they rejoice with you, they shout with you, they fast with you, they do everything with you. But when the rapture takes place, the lives are so unqualified, so unrighteous, so unholy that they are not able to go for the precious harvest up on high you would have wasted your whole life running up and down and uh, pushing a kind of anointing that did not prepare anyone for heaven god will help you yeah. you'll you'll prepare people for heaven in jesus name yeah. and whatever anointing is upon your life that is contrary to the anointing of the Holy Ghost. The Lord will take it away from you today. <laughs> you know, sometimes when you have a little child and she's holding a kind of a toy that doesn't even have good battery, and you want to give another thing greater, better, higher, and you say, give me that. It's no, 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 no. And they're keeping the old worthless, satanic, evil, and give that up so that you can have the right thing. You'll have the right thing. Amen. I say you'll have the right thing. Amen. I must tell you stories. Are you ready to hear? Yes. Many years ago in the church uh, where I got born again, I got saved. I was a change, my teaching, definite change in my life. And then I can even tell you the date, I can tell you the time where I knelt and I prayed with all my heart. I needed sanctification. Uh, no, so, so sanctification. Deep, heart rendering, heart changing, heart transforming sanctification. I see it now in my mind's eye as I knelt down there and the fire that burns every iniquity on the inside. That fire came. I knew it happened. And by the grace of God, God has kept that in me, with me until now. Amen. Then the Holy Ghost, the anointing. I prayed one month, had not received. And some of my Christian friends, a little bit older, some of them a little bit younger, they'll come by my side, they'll be praying, and then they'll be speaking in tongues. They will kind of tap me, do what I'm doing. I said, no, I don't want fake anointing. And what went on like that, I prayed, I prayed, I prayed. It took some time. And they were saying, you know, why, why is very simple? Just say something. Join syllables together and just say it. And then you are baptized. No, the one that is man-made anointing, that one I don't want. And I can remember the day, glorious day. Very simple. And the Lord spoke to me. And he said, if you being able know how to give good gifts unto, unto children, how much more shall your father give the Holy Ghost to them that ask him? It just opened my eyes and the Holy Ghost came. And the anointing came. And I could tell the difference when that Holy Ghost came with power. Since that time, 
I go here, I go there, and what I could not do before, where I could not go before, what I could not confront before, now by the grace of God, the anointing breaks every yoke. The real thing, that's why I can't, I don't go to places where uh, the muscle, my mouth, I cannot talk on salvation, I cannot talk on holiness, I cannot talk on the power of the Holy Ghost. And they say, still come, still. I say, no, no. Everywhere I go, I talk about the real thing. I come to you today, I present the real thing before you. I'm not going to entertain you, but you'll be empowered. You will be energized. When you look up to the Lord and you say, Lord, here I am. Make me what you want to make me in life. It will happen. Yeah. Point number one. Point number one. I'm talking on readiness of his present day harvest. In Matthew chapter 9. I'm reading from verse 36. It says, but when he saw the multitudes, he was moved with compassion on them because they fainted and they were, uh, they were scattered abroad as sheep having no shepherd. Verse 37. In verse 37, then said he unto his disciples, the harvest truly is plenteous, but the laborers are few. In verse 38, it said, Pray ye therefore, the Lord of the harvest, that he will send forth laborers into his harvest. He has a harvest of people, of souls. He has sinners he created them he wants them to be saved and he said those who are walking on the field and they are bringing in all these sinners into the kingdom who have repented who have been regenerated who have been ransomed who have become righteous they're so, they're so few. And the people who are walking on the field, they're few. Pray ye the Lord of the harvest that he will send laborers, not lazy people. That he will send laborers, not blindfolded people. That he will send the people that see the harvest, the people that want to do the harvesting, he'll send them into his Harvest. And then in Luke chapter 10, reading here from verse 1, we're told after these things, the Lord appointed 70 also, and he sent them to and to before his face into every place, every city whither he himself will come. He appointed before he anoints he appoints not just every dick and hurry not just the one that is drinking sin smoking smoking sin committing sin the one that has sin at the bosom friend and they are together and he said, I'm, I'm available, I'm available. You, know, you are not available yet. The people he appointed. He appoints, then he assigned. He assigned the people who have been appointed, go. Each of the harvest, get this done. You are appointed, and you are anointed. And it is that anointing, remember, after the appointment, you have the assignment, now you have the anointing. If you are saying amen, say it very well. Look at verse 2. In verse 2, we're told, Therefore said he unto them, The harvest truly is great, but the laborers are few. Pray ye therefore, the Lord of the harvest, that he would send forth laborers 
into his harvest. Look at three things very quickly. Number one, number one is the provision of free and full salvation. You see all these people that he appointed, assigned, anointed, and then he sent forth the art conversion. The art salvation. Number two, in the purity by faith in the, in the faithful sanctifier. I actually, when he called them together, before he spoke of John chapter 17, verse 21, I think sometimes we misunderstand. We look at verse 21 and we yank it out of the chapter and we put that as a great bold statement that they may be one but before that verse 21 you know he said in verse 6 i've given them your word and the world has hated them before he goes to verse 21 he said the people that you have given me they are yours and they are mine before he goes to verse 21 and he said in verse 14 they are not of the world even as i'm not of the world what leanness in their heart, what leanness in their view, what leanness in their nature had been purged up. He repeated again in verse 16, they are not of the world, even as I'm not of the world. Verse 17, sanctify them, purify them, purge them in thy truth. What thy truth? Thy word is truth. It was after that in verse 18, it said, as you have sent me into the world, so send I them into the world. And now it says that they all may be one. You know, the unclean and the clean cannot be one. The righteous and the unrighteous cannot be one. The holy and the unholy cannot be one. After he has saved them, he sanctified them, he purged them, then he said that they all may be one. The courageous and the cowards being one, well, something has to happen in the heart of that coward. You'll be bold. You'll be strong. The Lord will lift you up. And then as you come, and we don't even have to, you know, talk about, let's be one, let's be one. I see him, he was down there. I see him coming up and climbing up. And then he comes to this level and the Holy Ghost will join us together. And so there is the faithful sanctifier. Number three, the power for fervent, fruitful saints. Look at number one there. Number one there is the provision of free and full salvation. It tells us in uh, Luke chapter 14, verse 17, uh, and he sent the servant uh, at supper time. Uh, to say to them that were bidding, come, because all things are now ready. Come. Calvary has paid it all. Christ has shed his blood. Christ has declared, it is finished. Somebody shout amen. Yeah. Forgiveness is not available. Freedom from sin, now available. The provision of real, real salvation that saves us from sin, that takes us away from sin and makes us now to be walking in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. All that is now available. The provision of free, free, free salvation. If the Son shall make you free, you're free indeed. Amen. Free indeed. Amen. We're free from all the tamba, tobacco, that, you know, still binds people. We're free from all the bottles, all the alcohol that gives uh, people, you know, another mind. We're free from the smoking of cigarette, cigar, or marijuana we are free not somebody saying i want to work for god and i want to be uh, uh, you know a dynamic investor 
and I say some smell coming out of your mouth it looks strange what is that? oh pastor um, I smoked that thing I said what thing he said wait and you uh, want me to harvest and uh, work for God? Yes, 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 Pastor. All I need is anointing. Uh uh. That's the inner coming out of your nose or mouth or whatever will be pushed away. Amen. It is when we have that freedom freedom from sin. Freedom from all those evil, bad habits. And we do not get involved anymore with anything that is of sin, of Satan, and of all the sensualities of the world. And we have that freedom, salvation from the Lord. That is when we are on our way to have the anointing. The Lord do it in your life in Jesus' name. And so he says, come, all things are now ready. Freedom from sin, available now. Forgiveness, available now. A new life, eternal life, available now. It is then, as you come. And you don't just come, you repent of the sin. You turn away from the sin. You turn away from every sin, every evil that had bound you. And then you have the joy of salvation, the freedom that salvation brings, the triumph that salvation brings. It's only then we now move towards the next step. We're looking at number two here. Number two is the purity by faith. It is faithful in the faithful sanctifier. He is the sanctifier. Actually, when you look at your whole Bible, God said in the Old Testament, Be ye holy, for I am holy. The Lord said, Sanctify yourself. I am the Lord that sanctified you. When you come, now, look at a tree. The tree has roots. The tree has trunk. The tree has branches and fruit. You want to get rid of that tree. What do you do? You cut the tree. When you cut off the tree, you get rid of the fruit of the branches. That's like salvation. All the sins in our lives. They are like on the branches. They are like on the you know on the tree and you know the fornication the adultery and the covetousness and the stealing and the drunkenness and the works of the flesh they're like the fruits on the branches of sin and when you cut that off you the salvation that praise the lord no more adultery praise the lord no more fornication praise the lord no more stealing praise the lord no more covetousness praise the lord no more idolatry in any form in any way private or public those are the branches and the fruits but now there's the root and if, if you leave the root there and the rain comes and the circumstances and everything and you still come the roots will still generate branches so you now uproot that tree and once you take the roots there then you solve the problem there is still the root of sin there's still the tendency propensity to evil and when temptation comes the tendency, the propensity, and the depravity on the inside will respond to that temptation. That's why you are saved. All the branches are cut off. All the fruits are cut off. All the outward external sins are cut off. Now you come and the Lord uproots that nature on the inside. The nature of Adam, the nature of sin, the nature of the society, 
What I see society doing, that thing is ingrained inside. And then you come to the Lord, he uproots that. That is called sanctification. Say amen. amen. Look at Ephesians chapter 5. And I'm reading there from verse 25. It says in the middle that Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it. Why? Now, it is the love of God for the world. This one is the love for the church. What's the church? Ecclesia. The people who are already called out of the world. The people who already have the forgiveness, the freedom of their sin. The church. For the world, for God so loved the world, that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him will not perish, but have everlasting life. That's salvation. But now, after you are saved, you come into the church. Ecclesia, called out of the world, and you are called into the kingdom. Now, Christ also loved the church, that he gave himself for you. Verse 26. In verse 26. That he might sanctify. He gave himself for the world. That he might save the sinner. He gave himself for the church. That he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word. In verse 27. Verse 27. That he might present it to himself. A glorious church. A church where the members are fighting for leadership. <laughs> That's not a glorious church. A church where the ministers are going behind the curtain, power, power, power. And they're having some kind of power that is not of the Holy Ghost. That's not a glorious church. A church where people are stealing money. Uh -uh. That's offering now. You stole my, I stole my own, go and steal your own. A church where stealing is already established from top to bottom. That's not a glorious church. A church where members, ministers push away the first wife before death and then goes to hook up with another woman. And in the church, that church is just like the world. What do you do in the world? You do in that. That's not a glorious church, but a church saved, born again, born anew, born afresh, <clears throat> and born with the nature of Christ in them. And now He sanctifies them, He cleanses them, He purifies them, He purges them, that He might present unto Himself a glorious church. Not having sport. A church that the ministers, the pastors, the preachers, the bishops, and the lay leaders, the deacons, and the members know sport. That's, that's, that's a church that Christ wants to raise up. And that's the church that will make it at the rapture. That is what we need the anointing for. That we can so be anointed by the Holy Ghost. That our ministry, our preaching, our counseling, everything we do will bring up a church without spot, without wrinkle. You know wrinkle? When you are fresh, when you are young, you still have a flesh outlook that is fresh. 
Those things are not there, but as you are getting to your 60s and 70s, wrinkle there, wrinkle there. And then they advertise for you uh, in the social media. You want to get rid of wrinkles, mix this and mix this and rub, and then your face will be fresh. But your heart is still the heart of an old man. And your walking is still the walking of an old man. Madam, I'm sorry. How is your face so young? Like you are 40 years and your limbs and your, you know, walking, your gaze is like... 80 years who oh, said i have not got the one i will rub on <laughs> but this one i rub now makes my face free from wrinkles we don't need to rub anything i said you don't need to rub anything <laughs> from the inside all the wrinkles will go away <laughs> wrinkles are like the signs of the old man and in many people that say they are in the church, they have the signs of the old man in their character, in their behavior, in their lifestyle, in their response and reaction to whatever is happening around them. They have the wrinkle, the sign of the old man. Today, God will take it away. <laughs> He says, or any such thing, but that it shall be holy and without blemish. That's what purity, sanctification, holiness, that's what it does in our lives. And he is the faithful sanctifier. He will do it. Yeah. Uh, look at number three here. Number three, we're looking at the power for fervent fruitful service the power you are saved all the outward external branches and fruits are cleared away you are sanctified the root that Adamic nature that nature of Satan that depravity and that propensity to be sinning and sinning and sinning when higher, greater, bigger temptations come, it takes that away. And now after that, you know, Jesus could have uh, told the disciples, you've seen a lot, you've felt a lot, you've experienced a lot, go. Now, no, he didn't say that. He said they should wait. It was saved, wait. It was sanctified, wait in Jerusalem until ye be endued with power from on high. Somebody say amen. amen. Power from where? From say that again. Power. Let your heart understand that. Power. In isolation, no. There are people that go to take power from below. Power from the den of darkness. Power from the valley. Power from behind the curtain. You know, it's not just a heal the sick by what power? Is it power from on high? Or power from below because Jesus said many people will say unto me in that day Lord Lord I will not cast out devils in your name I will not prophesy in your name and in your name I we done many wonderful works yes that's power but where is that power coming from is it from on high check up or is it from below Jesus said that in the time of the end, false prophets and false cries will rise up. And they will do many wonderful great works that if it were possible, even the very elect will be deceived. That it's not just by power from what source? 
from watch center, from watch throne, as that power come from. We must have the power that comes from on high. Say good amen. amen. Now, if somebody goes to get power from below, power from the symmetry, power from the realm of darkness and death, and it comes out, heals this and heals this. You know what that does for you? It gives you popularity for 50 years, 70 years. After you are dead, you still have a thousand years, a million years, a trillion years, forever and ever to live. Now you are popular here for 70 years, for 100 years. But when you get to the other side and they say, where are you coming from? I'm coming from great ministry, dynamic ministry. And I said, no, but you, you know where you've got that power. And the person who gave you that power doesn't stay here in heaven it stays over there in hell go to the one you got your power from and then 5,000 years, a million years and on and on forever and ever Mr. Powerful Evangelist Mighty is now well, the one he got the power from what does it profit a man if he gains all the popularity of the world and he loses his own soul but there's power from on high there's power from heaven and you know you cannot have the two together satan is reigning there because he gave you power you submitted you surrendered your heart, your life, your destiny into the hands of the devil and you have so-called power. Before you can have power from on high, that fake one, that damning one, you have to drop. You cannot have the two. How can you have Satan and Christ helping you? Satan will not agree with Christ. Christ will not agree with Satan. You have to drop that one. When you drop that one, you come afresh. And you have salvation. You have sanctification. Then you have the spirit baptism. Look at this. Acts chapter 1 verse 8. But it shall receive power. This one is genuine. It shall receive power. This one is dynamite. You, you shall receive power. This one conquers Satan. Amen. This one conquers sickness. Amen. This one conquers every evil thing. This one walks in the day, walks in the night, walks at the crusade, walks in the church, walks in your personal life. This one walks in your family. Amen. Amen. His power is not in one room that you lock up and you tell your wife, don't go to that room. You tell the children, don't ever go to that room. If you open that door and you get to that room, whatever your eyes see, not my fault. I told you, don't go there. This one, we can go there. Power. Somebody shout, power. Ye shall receive power after, after, after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you. After, not that we push the Holy Ghost aside. Holy Ghost, don't control me. Don't control my life. Don't control my activity. I am, you know, going to do something. I'm going to apply my own self will. No, this one is power after that the holy ghost is come upon you he will come upon you and ye shall be witnesses unto me both in jerusalem where christ was crucified and in all judea where they rejected him and in Samaria where they had the kind of superstitious religion and then it says and to the uttermost part of the earth our time has come yeah. your time has come yeah. 
saved, sanctified, spirit filled. We go with the peace of God, salvation, with the purity of heart, sanctification, with the power of God, spirit, baptism. I have everything that Christ provided for me at Calvary. You can go then in that power. God will do wonders through you. God will turn your world around for the better in Jesus' name. We're coming to point number two here. Point number two, we're looking at rejection of perverted hypocrites. If Christ hates anything, he hates hypocrisy. If Christ detested anything he detested hypocrisy what's hypocrisy here i come in the open i preach holiness there i go in the private i practice unrighteousness that's hypocrisy here in the open i talk of the light and there in the backyard, I go into darkness. That's hypocrisy. A man that says we should not steal, do you steal? A person that says we shouldn't commit adultery, do you commit adultery? A person that disciplines church members, you did this, discipline. You did this, discipline. And the fellow who is disciplining church members. He does worse things than what he's trying to rebuke or correct. That's hypocrisy. A person that is double. You know, when you see this side of him, it's white and black. Uh, white, not black. When you see this other side of him, it's black, not white. Hypocrites. And there will be the final day rejection of perverted hypocrites. We're looking at three things here. Number one, we're looking at the fatal rejection of Christ's salvation. The salvation of the Lord is there. The salvation of the Lord is available. He rejects. He said, have you know what am I looking for? If I lay hands on the sick, they recover. How about the sins we are committing? Don't worry about that. And if I say to the lame, rise up, they rise up. What am I looking for again? You're looking for the salvation that will prepare your soul for heaven. But the people who reject that salvation, number two, the foolish replacement of Christ's satisfaction. Christ satisfies. Christ fills us up with joy, with contentment. Christ satisfies every desire and demand of our lives. And, and there are people that push that satisfaction from Christ alone. They don't see the, the, the fullness in Christ. They don't see the, the joy in Christ. They don't see the satisfaction and the wholeness that comes from Christ and they reject Christ's satisfaction they replace that with another thing they are not totally holy completely entirely for Christ number three the final retribution of continual 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 suffering look at number one there number one the fatal Rejection of Christ's salvation. Look at uh, Matthew chapter 22. I'm reading from verse 11. Matthew chapter 22 verse 11. And when the king came in to see the guests, he saw there a man which had not a wedding garment. The parable... They had been invited 
to the marriage. And guests came, but the king had prepared appropriate uniform, wedding garment for everyone. And he's free. Go there and take your own. Go there and take your own. But this man, he thought, I'm all right. <laughs> what do I need that one for? And as I compare my morals with them, it's okay. As I compare my standing in society with those people that have the wedding garment, I'm okay. I'm just like them. As I compare my own goodness with their own goodness, those who say they are saved, I can see what they, what they do beyond what I do. And because of that, they reject Christ's salvation. I'm good enough. I'm great enough. I'm moral enough. Superficially. But how about your heart? He came, the king came, and he saw one of the guests not having the wedding garment. And I want to ask, because now we have the younger generation of church members, of church workers, of church pastors. Before you come in into the ministry, you must be born again. There must be a definite experience and you must know what you heard. You must know how you responded. You must know when you were born again. But here comes a good-natured young man, a good-natured young woman. He did not cannot tell when he or she repented. Cannot tell what he or she abandoned at the time he came into the kingdom. And I say, how did you come into the kingdom? He said, Pastor, you know, my father was, you know, already born again, sanctified. My mother, uh, Pastor, if you knew my mother, born again and sanctified. And those, uh, you know, father, mother, they gave back to me as I opened my eyes like this, said, I say, you are deceived. You are deceiving yourself. There must be a definite experience of being born again. If you ask me, I'll tell you. I, I can take you to the place. I can show you the place. And I can tell you what I heard that I never had before. And I can tell you as I went on my knees. Maybe you're standing up or you're kneeling. I can, tell, I can tell you what I said to God. I can tell you that moment when the peace of God and the forgiveness of God came. And I knew I was born again. But here you are, you can tell, I can tell when I was sanctified, and you cannot, I can tell when the Holy Spirit came in. We must have that genuine experience, not just that, you know, where they're carrying on and you reject Christ's salvation. It says, friends, why are you here not having the wedding garment? Look at verse 12. In verse 12, it says, and it says, unto him. Friend, how camest thou in hither, not having the wedding garment? And he was speechless. If you get to the other side after death, and you are asked, Did you hear about being born again? Yes, I heard. Why were you not? Did you hear about repentance? A definite step that takes you away from the past and brings you to a very clear experience of so great salvation. I had. Why were you not saved? Did you hear that your righteousness is as filthy rags? And that righteousness is not enough to take you to heaven. You must have the righteousness of Christ imputed, imparted into your life. Yes, I heard. Why didn't you have then 
that righteousness from Christ and of Christ and by Christ. Look at verse 13. In verse 13, it says, Then shall the king say, Then said uh, the king to the servants, that's the angels, bind him hand and foot and take him away and cast him into outer darkness. I pray that will not happen to you. Amen. That will not happen to me. Amen. Me. That will not happen to me. I remember years ago, we were going around with uh, Scripture Union. And I came to Delta, I went to uh, Bini, went you know, everywhere where I see young, young people like that, preaching, 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 preaching. And there was somebody preaching with us. And he, he, in Nigeria here, he spent like three years with us, go here, go there, go there, preaching, preaching, preaching. And we're preaching being born again. And he was preaching being born again. And then eventually he traveled out. When he got over there, people there did not know him. So he went to a gospel preaching center. And he sat down there. And was hearing what the preacher there was saying. This man who had gone with us preaching for three years here. When he got over there and he heard what the preacher was saying. The Spirit of God convicted him. Do you have the experience this preacher is talking about? He had to admit no. They made altar call. And this, our preacher friend who had been preaching with us as went around, he stood up and that day he gave his heart to Jesus and became born again. Born again. Born again. The sincerity to understand. Yes, I'm dishing out to people, born again, born again. And then we hear the word now and we realize this is what I need. The Lord make you respond appropriately to his voice from heaven. Amen. This man bind him hand and foot and take him away and cast him into outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Look at number two here. Number two here, we're looking at the foolish replacement of Christ's satisfaction. The people who hear about Christ and they say, no, no. The satisfaction coming from Christ, I know where to get satisfaction. I pray I will not be foolish. I will not be foolish. What are we looking for? If you don't have the satisfaction from heaven here, if you reject the satisfaction that only comes from Christ, and you replace that, and you're going to have this other satisfaction, this other satisfaction, I pray God will wake us up. Amen. Look at Mark chapter 8. Reading from verse 36, Mark chapter 8. We're reading from verse 36. For what shall it profit a man if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Read that once you go. For what shall it profit me if I gain the whole world and lose my soul? Read it that way. If I gain all the popularity in the world, 
if we gain all the prosperity in the world, if we gain all the prizes and rewards and awards in the world, and then we lose our soul. What's the profit? Well, many people are not thinking of eternity. They are not thinking of the evaluation of heaven on our lives. All they're looking for, I performed there at the class and they gave me a standing ovation. But how about your private life? How about your relationships in the private? How about the secret, secret things that God knows that would hinder you from getting to heaven? Why don't you rethink? And why don't we kind of focus now on the right thing? What shall it profit a man? What shall it profit me? If he shall gain the whole world, if I shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul and lose my soul. We're looking at number three here. Number three, the final retribution of continual, continual, continual suffering. The final retribution of continual suffering we're looking at matthew chapter 8 these are the words of jesus and we're reading from verse 11 it said and i say unto you that many shall come from the east and from the west and shall a siege down with abraham and isaac and jacob to start with, from the words of Jesus, we know Abraham went to heaven. Do you agree with that? Yes, Isaac went to heaven. Jacob, complete it for me. Yes, Can Christ say this? assuredly about you knowing all your history knowing how you ended knowing what happened between death and destiny can christ say this about you do you have assurance without any shadow of doubt that if you let here to go to the great beyond that Christ and the angels and God and the saints who have gone on high. That this is what they'll say about you. Do you have that unshakable assurance? Jesus said without any possibility of contradiction that many shall come from the east and west and shall sit down with abraham and isaac and jacob in the kingdom of heaven verse 12 in verse 12 but the children of the kingdom the religious people those who are superficially religious they carry the bible they say i believe the bible but they're superficial in death they do not have the seed of the kingdom planted in them the children of the kingdom shall be cast out into outer darkness this is not paul this is not peter this is christ affirming the kingdom of heaven is there and abraham isaac jacob they are there many will come from the east and the west they'll be there but the people who profess to be children of the kingdom they'll be cast out into outer darkness there shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth whatever happens i will not go there Whatever the temptation, whatever the trial, I will not go there. The Lord preserve you for heaven. Amen. And the Lord give you the heart and the life that lives for heaven in Jesus' name. Amen. Point number three now. Point number three, the rapture of the precious harvest. 
the Lord is coming again. Amen. And what we're doing now, this is end time habits. We're going out, whatever we can do, whoever we can rescue, whoever we can lead into repentance and redemption. We're going out and getting that done so that your converts, my converts, our converts, when the rapture, the resurrection takes place, they will go up to meet the Lord in the sky. Amen. I will be there. Amen. When the role is called up yonder, when the role is called up yonder, I will be there. As the saints are marching in, the saints marching in, the saints marching in, you'll go with them. Yeah. When the Son of Man cometh, shall he find faith on the earth? There'll be religion, there'll be churchianity. There will be denominationalism. There will be fanaticism. There will be those who will fight for their tribe. But when the Son of Man comes, shall he find faith? Faith for salvation. Faith for sanctification. Faith with the spirit immersion enveloping us moving us guiding us driving us the way we ought to go when the son of man cometh shall he find not activity there are activities without real exploits without real experience in the lord and without the presence of christ the power of Christ walking in us, moving us. When the Son of Man cometh, what's he going to find in your life? Activity, sweating up and down, popularity. But shall he find faith on the earth? The faith that believes and believes of the death of your heart that you belong to God and you live for God. The faith. That has the presence and the power of the Holy Spirit in you. That he moves you. He guides you. And you don't say, you never say a word contrary to the Holy Reach. Or to the Holy Spirit. The faith that makes you to stand when others bend. When others sway with the wind. When others yield the temptation and trial, the faith that makes you to stand. When the Son of Man cometh, shall he find faith in your heart? By faith, Abraham, when he was called to go out of the awe of Chaldees, he obeyed, not knowing whither he went. Shall he find faith in your heart? The faith. That makes Abraham to say, yes, Lord. And God said, bring that Isaac. Bring that commodity. Bring that thing. And offer him for me on the mount I will show you. And he took that child. Believing that God is able to raise him even from the dead. And God said, now Abraham, I know that you love me. And you can give up anything for me. The faith that made Moses by faith. Moses refused to be called the son of Pharaoh. Of Pharaoh's daughter. Willing to suffer affliction with the people of God. Rather than to enjoy all the pleasures of sin. The faith that made Daniel to go to the last den. You want to cast me to the last den. Because of my conviction, I hold on to my conviction. Held on to that conviction that the faith that stands firm, whatever. The faith that makes Shadrach, Abednego, Shadrach Meshach and Abednego to say, the Kadnezer, we're not careful to answer you. We've given our heart to the God of heaven. And if you want us to bow to an idol, 
never I, we might be the only people in this community in this village in this tribe that will not bow down to idol you want to set off fire furnace so be it but we will not bow down to your idol and then Nebuchadnezzar got angry if you're going to retain the faith you must accept the anger of the people the powers that be and then got his men and he threw them into the fire and when they got there the Lord had given the promise already when you go through fire you will not be burnt yeah. and through the rivers you will not be drowned and then Jesus left everything he was doing over there and he came and then he was discussing with them walking with them fellowshipping with them and Nebuchadnezzar said I taught those people a lesson nobody will ever contradict me anymore and he looked in and said what come counselors did we not throw three men each of the furnace of it he said yes our king he said i see four men look at that one two three look at this one the very son of god he came into the fire came into the furnace it was with them the lord will be with you yeah. Keep that faith, keep that focus, keep that fervency, and keep that commitment until the Lord will come. When the Son of Man cometh, he'll find faith in your heart. He'll find faithfulness in your life. He will find fortitude in your life. We'll get it from heaven by prayer. And all that comes with the anointing. Anointing of faith anointing with faithfulness anointing with uh, fortitude are you there i can't see i'm looking for you why don't you stand up then and say lord here am i here am i here am i whatever others do i will have the faith that stands the faith that saves the faith that sanctifies the faith that serves the faith that is bold the faith that is courageous the faith that stands firm and nothing the winds that blow the waves that come nothing will drive you nothing will shake you you remain 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 abide in the lord as and when the lord shall come faith faith or salvation faith or sanctification faith or spirit baptism faith that makes you a servant of god man or woman and you serve with fortitude or courage and you do not shame and you abide in the way in the word in the will of god pray and the lord will grant you that steady overflowing anointing he'll give it to you he'll give it to you the faith the faithfulness the fortitude the power the anointing that will make you successful in every field of service pray from your heart and say lord here i am and when the lord comes and find faith faithfulness fortitude in my heart